Do you want to hear a joke about paper? Sure. Well, I would tell you a joke about paper, but it'd be terrible. Get it? <laughs> that was so bad, Kristen. <laughs> Why am I laughing then? Ain't that just the way it goes? Hello, people. I am Jabby Koei, joined by Kristen, the joke teller, Stefan Sanpino. Hola. And we're looking at 21 things only in India tourists can't understand. So, uh, have you been to India? No, not yet. Not yet, but you I'm will. going to. So this is from Brightside, the YouTube channel. We've done reactions to their stuff before. I like their stuff so far. So if you guys enjoy the video that we're about to watch, please go ahead and click on the link in the description below and just scroll down. If you click on that link, you can give the original video an upvote and subscribe to their channel at the same time. And come back here, watch our reaction and subscribe here, bell icon, all notifications. Before somebody gets married in India, they get a thorough, shall we say, snooping, sometimes without even being aware of that. There are pre-matrimonial detective agencies in India that provide services of private investigators. I love the stock footage that they're using, by the way, of the guy in the suit and the hat and the goggles. I'm like, yo, it's like, I think that guy's up to something. <laughs> Right. If someone's far away. And they look like that. You're gonna they look like, like that. I'm gonna be like, "What you doing, bro?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Spit inspectors. These people, also known as nuisance detectors, catch and give fines to those who litter or spit in public. You get a fine for spitting. You aren't likely to meet anywhere else is an ear cleaner. So the process what? of removing earwax requires some traditional instruments. They don't use Q-tips. We're so used to that. I, I, well, I need to see. I need to see where this is going. What? I need to see where this is going. But that actually sounds smart. Q-tips actually push the wax further into your ear. Yes, and but you know they're not actually for your ear. Right. If you read it on the on the thing. Well, I, there's a whole conversation about that. But I'm just saying, like that actually sounds cool. Their instruments are called the steel needle, some cotton, and a pincer. That looks frightening. Yikes. The ear cleaner rolls some cotton around the needle so it looks like a Q-tip, and the clients have their ears cleaned. Ear cleaners usually can be found somewhere in the city center, around monuments, or at a local market. Just... This profession is rare and exotic in today's India, but it used to be quite common. In this country, your dream may come true and you'll get paid for sliding down a water slide. Hold on, what? let's just talk about the ear cleaning thing for a second. I personally wouldn't trust that. No, just some dude just a about. random person, you're yeah. like, you, clean my ear. Yeah, I personally wouldn't trust that. I think that if you were to find someone like that here in the streets, they'd probably get arrested. <laughs> I feel like that's like asking for your, like a death wish or something. Well, I mean, it's a common practice, it seems like, and so it, it, it I know, seems but fine. like out here, I don't out know. here, there's no way. Like, oh, sure, sure, there's yeah. No way. But like, if it's in a clinical environment, then I would be more comfortable with you know yeah, someone like, extracting wax out of my ear. You get paid to go the down a slide. The called water slide tester, and these people have to it. control if the slides are both safe and fun. You do that? Yeah. I wouldn't do that. I would Usually, do it. these people work in various hotels and spend most of their time in planes, traveling from one resort to another. There's a village where locals have no locks on doors. Not a single house there has one. Even public toilets have no locks or doors. Unacceptable. <laughs> it might seem somewhat hey. reckless, but in fact, it's one of the safest places out there. I, the love, this I love this little animated guy. Yeah. He's just I love so his ridiculous. Smile. Regarding the bathroom <laughs> thing, I get afraid that the locks aren't good enough. Yeah, but you have urinals. There's no bath. Like there's no door, so you should be fine. It's more vulnerable when you're pooping, though. <laughs> Jesus. Also lean a wooden stick against the door just to keep the stray dogs out of their houses. The only police station opened there only in 2015, and still there are no complaints. Even the local bank has no lock. It's what? officially the only bank in the world that's never locked. When the locals are out of town, they don't ask the neighbors to look after their houses, and they're not afraid to leave valuables, money, and jewelry without hiding them. Huh. Vegetarian dishes are quite popular in India. Between 15 and 30 percent of the whole country's population are vegetarian. Some people tend to eat fish only and never eat any land animals. Many large food chains, famous for yummy meat dishes, even provide a whole new vegetarian oh, menu that looks for so India. Good. Cutlery isn't really required for many traditional Indian dishes. They say that mouth-watering oh. curry tastes even better if eaten with the fingers. Now, really? I would assume that you'd want to eat the fingers separately, but hey, just thinking out loud here. 
God damn it. Why would you say that? <laughs> you, you, oh, and then you see how he added more uh, Those kinds of jokes. <laughs> this is like dad jokes overpowered. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. There's also a wide range of crazy traditional dishes, but there's one called, okay, let's just put it on the screen, thanks. It's made from potatoes, which are pretty common for Indian food. That's actually a, a smart move on his part to just have it on the screen rather than try to pronounce it and butcher yeah. the, the phrase. The exotic part is that the potatoes in the dish are actually extra old. Even more, they're rotten. What? And there's a bunch of traditional spices. It's just a side dish. You'll need to choose the main course. Samosas are another traditional Indian dish made of potatoes. They're deep fried and look like dumplings. And they're both a side dish and a main course. Now, if you love sugar, don't forget to thank India for it. It was first extracted and refined there about 2,500 years ago. Then the Chinese picked up the technique and it spread all over the world. Another thing you should be grateful to India for is shampoo. The very first version was made from dried herbs, some extracts and water. Soap berries and soap nuts were widespread in India. Thank you, so India. this component was a perfect match for the shampoo formula. It's probably because of the right shampoos that most Indians have absolutely stunning hair and cool hairstyles. By the way, in India, it's possible to cut clients' hair with fire. Yeah, it's I've seen that. It's not that widespread, though. Only you haven't seen that? Said cut with fire? Yeah, Are you, you haven't nuts? seen that? No! I follow a bunch of, like, big-time Indian, like, hairdressers, and they're always like... <laughs> It also gets rid of your split ends. I might do it once. I'm not letting heat that close to my head. Oh, we were talking about taking hot showers earlier. I do it. <laughs> oh my lord! Like oh. I do it maybe once. I'd I observe. Send, I'll send it to you. I will observe Kristen doing it, but I don't think I'd do it myself. To do it, 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 it gets first. Rid of they sprinkle the hair with ends. some flammable powder. Then they light it up and literally set the hair on fire. Mm -hmm. While the hair's burning, the stylist creates the right shape with the help of two combs. He says the fire helps fix the hair right. He also claims to have at least 15 clients each day who come to get this very cut. He sure makes it look like it's a singe to do. <laughs> the fucking guy! <laughs> so ridiculous. I wonder if that model even knows how he was used in this video. I bet a lot he's of this, so excited about it. A lot of this is stock, like stock photos, stock video, uh. that is all, you know, pieced together to fit the writing. I'm willing to bet that that guy has no idea he's even in this video. If you like holidays, India is the destination for you. Indians have about a thousand various festivals and events. Sometimes people even celebrate the first hair cutting, or who knows, hair burning. All of the local celebrations are totally worth seeing. Holi is the festival of colors, and people consider it to mark the beginning of spring. It starts at the end of February and finishes in March. It involves the famous powder throwing. So don't wear that brand new white shirt to the festival. Diwali is the celebration of lights that last five days. People give gifts to each other, usually sweets, and light thousands of candles and oil lamps. No other country in the world has that many celebrations. India holds a lot of world records too. The largest sundial in the world is located in the town of Jaipur. It's a tower 90 feet tall. It's made of polished stone and looks like an architectural masterpiece. The shadow of this sundial oh. moves at about two and a half inches per minute. So you can see the time literally move there. Oh, that's cool. Another longest thing in India are nails. According to the Guinness World Records, the longest fingernails ever belong oh. to an Indian man. They're almost as long as a London double-decker bus. He got them off back in 2018. But before, the total length of all his fingernails had reached 358 inches. Oh, this is nasty. There's also a record for the quantity of movies How do you produced wipe his butt? per year. I, I don't, I don't, How I do don't. How do you wipe his butt? I don't like the fingernail thingies. I've seen pictures of that, because it's, it's not just Indians. There's like chi yeah, Chinese people and all kinds of cultures that do that stuff. I just think it's kind of gross. Like me personally, I just don't, I'm not into that at all. As like, even when I see women in the workplace, like with these long ass acrylics. I'm just like, like really long, yeah. In 2018, 1,813 new movies were filmed in India. Oh. The quantity is so impressive that if you wanted to watch all the movies made in the country in 2018, and you watched a movie per day, you'd still be watching them today in 2021. 
Wow. North Sentinel Island, which is a part of India. It's interesting that they were showing actual film to make the point that they were making about how many movies India makes. I mean, I'm sure India has been making, you know, large volume for a long time, but I think what's also helping with that is the fact that it's digital. It's like, yeah. it's easier to process that. Like, in this day and age, you can shoot a commercial and have it edited while you're still on set. The process of developing all that is it's so different. way streamlined. It's so mm -hmm. much shorter. You can literally show the director what they just shot and it, it being cut together, like within minutes. It's probably the world's most remote place mm. since nobody can visit it. Strangers aren't welcome there. The locals are quite introverted and would always reject any contact from outside. No ship is allowed to come closer than five nautical miles. And special people always patrol the area. It's one of the very few places in the world that has no modern civilization. Recently, the island's been open to the researchers, but tourists still can't visit it. Several years ago, two frogs got married in one coastal town named Udupi. It was done to encourage the rainfall. It was too hot, over 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Both animals had unique outfits for this occasion, and the bride even had a tow ring. The two frogs were sent off on a honeymoon to Manapala and were released there. Sadly, each of these guys had to go their own way a couple of months later because the locals had to stop the downpour that started soon after their wedding somehow. There are not... I don't subscribe to that kind of stuff, but that's a wild coincidence that they yeah. wedded these frogs and then immediately after it started pouring like crazy and then they pulled the frogs apart into it to stop the rain. I wonder if the rain stopped as a result. That is crazy <laughs> timing. You marry these frogs and then boom, water. Divorce the frogs, That's... boom, no water. <laughs> That's wild. For but six seasons overall here. According to the North, West and Central Indian calendars, Indian spring is in March and April. Next comes summer, also known as hot season. It starts in May and finishes in June. It's also one of the marriage seasons. Next comes monsoon, also known as rainy season. It starts after the summer solstice, usually in July, and lasts throughout August. Next comes fall, which spreads from late September to mid-November. After fall, they have a pre-winter or simply cool season. <laughs> the real winter or cold season starts in January and goes on until February. In fact, there are many more other calendars in India, but all of them have six seasons with slight differences. The Statue of Unity is actually twice as tall as the Statue of Liberty, reaching 600 feet. Whoa. It was open to the public only about two years ago. Oh my gosh. That statue cost $300 million, if I understand correctly. I just learned about this statue the other day on my live stream. I didn't know it was a real thing. If my memory serves me right, he's considered like India's Iron Man and he brought unity to the country. Oh wow. Yeah, and so that's why they made this statue for him. The statue consists of five parts, but only three of them are accessible to visitors. The first part starts at the statue base and finishes at the shins. This zone has three levels and includes the exhibition area, a garden, and a museum. The second part reaches up the statue's thighs. The third one has a viewing spot at a height of 500 feet. The fourth part is the maintenance area, and visitors can't get there. Finally, the fifth one comprises the shoulders and head. In the first 11 days after its opening, almost 130,000 tourists came to see this colossal statue. That's more than the population of the capital of Kansas, Topeka. Apparently, a whole lot of people showed up Topeka at this statue. Yeah, pun intended. <laughs> Why would you do that? The puns, the puns are, are, are a lot of fun. Yeah, that statue, I, I'm a little bit, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit disappointed you can't go up to the head to see like, out through the eyes or something like that. That'd but be cool. I, I mean, I, cool. I guess it's not really practical. Like you can see right there in this in this uh, still where you're able to see out from. Yeah. It's like right at his midsection yeah. under his chest. I mean, that's still considerably high, but like not as high cool. as the eyes. Put it in his like, forehead or something like that. Maybe putting it at the at the chest line is it feels less less disrespectful. It would also be kind of cool if there was a way to have it 360 because mm -hmm. I've been to St. Louis, Missouri and they, have, and they have the arch. You look at like this little tiny window to see out to the city. And I think you can only see out one side if not, maybe you can see out both sides, but it's still like a very limited vantage point. So I wonder what it's like to be up there to be able to see out. I wonder how it looks. I literally just learned about this dude and this statue like Recently. a couple days ago. The goofy guy that got walking around through this whole thing, 
That was something else. I love it. Yeah, that, I mean, they really made use of that guy in the animation. How do you feel about eating with your hands? I don't like it. You don't like it. Neither no. does Achara. Achara's not into that either. I'm not into uh, it. I personally could go with, I mean, I'm used to eating French fries, so it's not a big deal to me. But when the food is messy, like that's the one thing I haven't tried to do with Indian food yet. It's like when it looks messy, like rice, I've seen them eat rice with their hands. I'm like, I don't know how you do that because it feels like it's not as efficient for the American style of eating, mm -hmm. which is gorge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I need utensils yeah. so I can just get as much in my face as possible for it before I get full. If you're at hometown buffet, you need to put as much into the body as possible before your body goes, hold on a second. And you go, no, no, just a little bit more. I just don't like you know? my hands dirty. Like, I don't know. French fries, I'm okay. You have a burrito, but I normally like wrap it with like a paper towel you have or a something. What? Burrito? A burrito, okay, gotcha. But you like, Normally put a paper towel, but maybe because my mom scolded me so hard when I was younger. But if you were in India know. and they gave you the dish and they, they said you have to eat this with your hands. I would. You totally do it. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I would do it. Yeah, I mean, I personally would as well. I'm not used to it, but no. I'm, I'm open to doing it because I don't want to be disrespectful if that's how you're supposed to eat it. But traditionally, like, Americans use utensils and stuff I just like always, that, yeah. yeah. I would have to wash my hands though. Yeah, but like there are certain foods that I, I I remember eating in India where you have to use your hands, like pani puri, it's like this little, it's almost like a taco in a way. Mm -hmm. It's like you you eat tacos I mean, with you your eat hands. tacos with your hands, yeah. yeah. It's the stuff that like can fall apart yeah. really easily. That's where it's, it's tricky. I can't imagine the flavor being wildly different as they said in the video. Yeah, what would that be? There is some validity to it. Have you ever drank out of a out of a metal straw yeah. out, uh, rather than a plastic straw? Yeah. It feels different. Mm -hmm. If you eat with plastic utensils versus metal utensils, it's different. it does feel different. I would imagine there is something different when you're using your hands, but I would get afraid of actually biting onto my hands because <laughs> I have totally done I've, I've bitten I wouldn't my have that. No, I would not be afraid of that. I would because I've totally bitten my finger in my anxious uh, endeavor to eat as many fries as I could. I, I was going real quick because I was really hungry. How do you do that? And I bit my finger. I've totally like bitten the inside of my cheek. I've bitten I've myself before. So I'm just saying like it's possible you might bite yourself. And I would love to know in the comments if anyone here has ever done that while eating. The potato How's thing. That? The potato thing kind of freaked me out a little bit because they said the potatoes were old. But here's the thing. Mole and stuff is actually like an antibiotic. Like it's actually good for you. Say that one more time. Antibiotic. Say the whole thing one more time. The mole is like an antibiotic. <laughs> You're cutting off your own words. <laughs> the mole. The mold. mold. Mole. The mold. The mold. Okay, the mold. Uh, the mold on the potato uh -huh. is like an antibiotic. Uh huh. Mole is actually good for you. To a certain extent. I've never heard that. But yeah, it is. That's what they when you, make. When my brain. Penicil penicillin, I think. Penicillin. 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 Uh huh. Is made out of mold. 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 It's a D at the end of that word. Mold. They cook it. I'm sure it's good. But at first I was like, mmm. And then I was like, well, I guess it'd be probably good for your body, though. Yeah. Well, I'd have to do some Googling on that and, um, yeah. Look up, look up things to meet my confirmation bias that you're wrong. So you ah, guys, thanks so I'm much. Not. Thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Subscribe to Brightside's YouTube channel if you want to see more content like this, and um, please subscribe here as well. Bell icon, all notifications. I'm Jabby Kuwait. This is Kristen Stephen Sampino. Peace out.